For the last couple weeks I was trying to find a new cruiser to fly and in the end I have decided to go and buy the Staber 2. Now the Staber 2 is actually very similar to the Vagabond, both are heavy assault cruisers and both have very similar stats. Now there is a difference in the hull design of the ships but I hope in the future that the Staber 2's hull design gets changed to be a lot more similar to the Vagabond. Now let's take a look at this ship's statistics, basically uh, at the ship trait description. Raw bonus plus 5 seconds, damage control activation time, advanced medium can no pressure bonus will give you plus 10% medium can accuracy falloff, minus 6% medium can activation time, and the advanced cruiser command bonus will give you plus 5% flight velocity. Overall, uh, solid, uh, solid stats. The Staber 2 is the fastest cruiser in the game, even faster than a Cinnable. The ship has 1 drone, 5 high slots, 3 medium slots, 5 low slots, 3 combat and 3 engineering rigs. Surprisingly a big cargo hold capacity for a cruiser. The Staber 2 is primarily a shield tank, however you can make the Staber 2 a armor tank, but in my case, because I want to fight this ship like the Vagabond, I will go with a shield tank. 2470 gigajoule is the capacitor, capacitor recharge time 558 seconds, 11.07 gigajoule per second is the recharge rate. The Staber can lock 7 targets, 70 meter signature radius, 324 meter is the scan resolution, 15.6 is the center strength, 294 meter per second flight velocity and warp speed is 3 astronomical units per second. The Staber 2, like I mentioned before, is the fastest cruiser in the game even faster than the Cinnabal. Of course, in warp the Cinnabal will be faster because of the angel roll bonus that the ship has. Now let me show you the build on uh, this Staber 2. So the Vagabond does use uh, a shield booster, it is a ac active tank ship because it has a bonus on the shield booster boost amount. Now this ship doesn't have that, but I solved the issue by using the implants and by using the rigs. 18.89 km is the accuracy falloff, 61.91 tracking speed, overall very nice stats on the medium autocannons. 541.27 DPS, it's a little bit low, that's the only thing that I might have to improve on this ship. 1 point, 1 web and 1 energy Nosferatu. Now, depending on the target and on the situation, you can swap into a Scrambler. I personally uh, use the Long Disruptor on this ship and I keep a 15 or 16 km orbit from target. Or you can use dual Scramblers and one web when you engage a ship that has long range weapons. This should be enough to hold most ships, but on this ship I like to use the medium, actually hold a second, uh, where is the medium Nosferatu? You can actually uh, use the large neutralizer and a large booster, I will show you how to do that in a second, but first let me return the Nosferatu, this is also a build that I like to use. As for the drones, the drone is not that important, I have only one Mark 9 drone, afterburner, one large shield booster, damage control and dual adaptive invulnerability fields. And overall, this is a tank build, a brawling tank build that should last for a very long time. Now as for the rigs, I have tank rigs, anti-thermal screen reinforcer, core defense charge and anti-EM reinforcer. Basically improved the resistance and shield booster performance in the engineering rigs, I improved the capacitor and I have increased the ship's velocity. 31,419 cold hit points, 47, 56, 45 and 54 percent resistance, 7,449 shield hit points, which is honestly not really that bad. The Staber 2 is a speed tank ship, that aspect works really well for the Staber. Capacit 1 minute and 32 seconds and 573.30 meter per second is the flight velocity on this ship. Let me show you the active stats with this Undocking. build. I will show you how to fit the large neutralizer and the large booster. That build is also very 
very interesting and I have to try it out uh, when I get the chance to. Okay, my modules are a little bit misplaced. Let me do this. Okay, and this should... Yeah, this is looking nice. Okay, adaptives are enabled. Orbit on zero from the station. After burner is on. And let's take a look at the ship stats. 49,341 hit points, 77, 81, 76, and 80% resistance, which is, you know, not bad. I really like the the tank on this little ship, 1460.52 meter per second is the afterburner speed, which is honestly not not slow, it's really quick. With the damage control, the tank goes up to 145,000, 92, 94, 92 and 93 percent resistance for 8 seconds. Now on this ship I have a very unique nanocore, this is the sleep nanocore, and the sleep nanocore has a sleeper mode which is very interesting it's basically a secondary damage control fused with a capacitor battery minus 25 percent shield boost minus 25 percent armor repair minus 25 percent damage plus 50 percent resistance and plus 75 percent uh, minus 75 percent recharge time on the capacitors which is nice you can activate uh, the sleeper core to recharge the shield to recharge the capacitor and that will sustain the shield booster for a very long time it lasts 30 seconds with a 500 second cooldown and here you can take a look at how quickly the capacitor goes up everything is currently up and running and with this combination this ship is capacitor stable for 30 seconds which honestly is enough after all the tank on this ship will prevent a lot of incoming damage. Capacity is stable at around 70-65%. The DPS will be lower of course and 98,000 hit points, 88, 90, 88 and 90% resistance on all the damage types. And honestly I'm really, really happy with the current outcome. Docking request the accepted. The core is nice and it can help in some certain situations where you have to use the booster for a longer period of time. Extends the shield boost amount for 30 seconds. Okay, now what else can you do with this ship? Now I like to use this ship with the long range disruptor and like I said before I like to orbit at 15-16 kilometers basically outside of the scrambler and web range and for that a tracking computer can actually be very useful now i did encounter a lot of well not a lot of problems but i did encounter some tracking problems with the afterburn when i when i orbit full speed so i think i will swap the adaptive into the tracking computer in order to enhance the tracking and optimal range and of course fall off range on this ship so that I can orbit uh, at Undocking. longer distances without worrying about the uh, tracking uh, on the on the alt cans. Okay, now let me show you the optimal range with the with the track computer, and of course let me show the tank with only one adaptive invulnerability field. Basically, now the ship is more of a speed tank. 39,380 hit points, 66, 72, 65, and 81% resistance, and the velocity remains around the same. 21.44 accuracy fall off, 3.3 optimal, 67.76 tracking speed, 3.94 seconds is the activation time. I have the barrage implant, and that will almost double the DPS. Now it's 12.5 DPS, which can help to boost the DPS a little bit. And with the track computer active, the, the range 31.65 kilometers, optimal range 44.88, tracking speed 91.19, and of course everything else remains the same, which should allow for a decent 16, 18, or perhaps even a 20 kilometer orbit around the targets. Okay, and with the damage control, the tank is 116,000. 89, 91, 88, and 90 percent resistance, which is still pretty solid. It can help uh, against the barrage implant, and it can help in 
other very risky situations. And of course, don't forget, you also have the sleeper core. Now, this is the build with the large energy neutralizer, which I think I might start to uh, use a lot more often. Uh, basically, uh, you can kill the capacitor off your target and then you don't have to worry about low DPS because uh, if they don't have a tank, then uh, if they don't have capacitor, they will not have any tank. Which is a very nice tactic to use with this ship. And the power grid is almost filled up to the top, with only a little bit of power grid left to spare for something else. The capacitor will take a, a big hit, but that is to be expected. And 22.26 km is the optimal range, accuracy of 12. 12.69 on the large neutralizer. You could enhance the power grid on this ship if you like, but I personally prefer to have uh, this current setup in the engineering rigs. And of course, you can change the combat rigs as well if you. If now, the next fit that I will show you is a passive shield tank build. It uses the same disruptor. Web and Nosferatu, but it has dual shield extenders, the afterburner, damage control, and the adaptive shield hardener. Now let me quickly go and use the Republic Fleet large extender because the ship has enough power to use that. 50,000 hit points, 47, 56, 45, and 54 percent resistance. Now let me let me show you the active undocking. Stats. With this current build, it's actually surprisingly tanky. Over 18,000 hit points in the shield, and I think uh, that I think that's actually really solid. Now let me show the active stats: Orbit Zero, Afterburn on, Adaptive on. 69,514 hit points, 66, 72, 65, and 71 percent resistance with 18,000 hit points in the shield. Which is honestly really nice. Now of course we can enable the extenders and they will increase the shield capacity. Which can help in some situations. 6754 additional shield upon activation on the Revolute Fleet extender and on the medium one. On the medium one it doesn't want to show for some reason. Okay. And with the damage control active it's 5000 hit points. 8, 9, 91, 88, and 90 percent resistance, and with the sleeper core, it's 411,000 hit points. 94, 95, 94, and 95. This is this equals the hit points of a battleship, and yes, this is uh, ridiculous, and I love it. I love the tank on the on the Staber too. It has good speed tank and overall uh, solid. Solid tank by itself, 139,000 hit points, 83, 86, 83, and 85 percent resistance uh, with only the sleeper core up and running. And I'm personally really, uh, really happy with a build like this. Although, if I plan to fly this ship like the Vagabond, then the ship will probably Docking remain request a accepted. active shield tank. We've probably a tracking computer active. Now, you can actually enhance uh, the effects of the tracking computers, shield extenders and shield boosters by using the general units. Nowadays, it's easy to obtain the implants. Even the level 15 implants are more than enough to, uh, to serve in combat. For tracking computers, I think I will go uh, and increase the optimal range because I already have decent tracking. As for the shield recharge implants, I will increase the shield recharge rate. And that will make the Staber 2 a lot closer to being a Vagabond. Should have around 50% extra shield booster performance with the unit and rig combined. I can also play around with the rig integrations, but I think that will be a little bit expensive. 
this can add plus 18% to shield booster performance. And this is the... Oh, this is actually the extender bonus. Okay, so it can extend the effect by 32% or passively increase the effect by 18%, which is still really nice. I can probably get around 600,000 hit points on this ship. Now, since I'm always uh, real with you here, and now I will talk about some problems that uh, you will encounter if you use a build like this with only one disruptor. Warp Gemmer Strength is only two. Nowadays, unfortunately, most ships have a lot of warp core optimizers, so in order to hold them, you have to have a lot of points, so that means three scramblers, uh, or you have to use ships that have a bonus on the strength. And that is basically one of the main reasons why uh, I don't do a lot of solo PvP anymore, although I still do solo PvP, this video will be solo PvP. With probably the exception being at the very end of the video, you will see what I mean, it will be a very interesting... It will definitely be a very interesting fight. But I will not spoil much, and well, with that being said, I think it will be time to slowly undock. And it will be time to see what the Stabber 2 can do. Can this ship actually be used like the Vagabond? If that's possible, I will be very happy because the Vagabond might very well be the ship that did got me into uh, PvP in this game around, I would say, a long time ago, over 10 years ago, because I basically grew up with this game. So, the first target, we have a Prophecy. Now, throughout this video, I will be using the tank build with dual adaptives. because I'm testing out to see how it will work. Alright, my apologies for the weird cut. Okay, there's the prophecy. I landed at 26 kilometers from the prophecy. The prophecy appears to be a armor tank. Okay, I will orbit at 17 kilometers first. And then as the fight goes on, I will probably approach the Prophecy, it all depends on what modules they have. Now, by the looks of it, this Prophecy has a lot of, a lot of resistances, so I will orbit at, let's say 15 kilometers, the Prophecy is using a 3 Nosferatus, so I don't have to worry about any webs or scramblers would be a good opportunity to test out how the capacitor on this ship holds out. Now, I'll be honest, I really wish that I had a tracking computer right now. I think a tracking computer will work really good on this ship, but back when I recorded this, I went with a full-on tank build, and we will see how I change the build over time. Now, the Prophecy is using medium missiles, and I think they are using one large... one large missile launcher. Perhaps large rapid missiles, not really sure. I think those are large rapid missiles. The percentage of recovered shield is quite significant, as you can see. Although the armor tank on the Prophecy is so far holding really well. Dual Nosferatus. Well, the Prophecy stopped using the Nosferatus on my ship. So that probably means that the Prophecy is using the Nosferatus on the other pirate ships. Now, I have reduced the speed just to see if it will improve the damage that I do on the Prophecy, but I don't see uh, much of a improvement. That Prophecy has a really good tank. I would say the Prophecy has 
dual adaptives and perhaps one reactive. Also looks like they might be using an afterburn. And perhaps a medium armor repairer. My capacitor holds really well. I did use the sleeper cord to boost up the capacitor a little bit. The speed will help at reducing the incoming damage. Although the tank on the Prophecy is slowly going down, they are losing armor very slowly. Perhaps I might even improve the DPS on this ship by changing the rigs a little bit. There is still a lot of a lot of things to test out with the starter tool, but so far I'm really happy with the with the tank. Holds really well. The capacitor also holds really well. In the end this will be a endurance battle, the ship with the better capacitor performance will win. Now the prophecy has a advantage because the armor repairs don't use a lot of capacitor. But I don't take a lot of damage on the shield. so. So we will see how this will how this will end. Usually fights with the Stabber 2 can be quite long. Although I still don't do I still don't do a lot of damage on the prophecy. However, the armor is slowly going down, my capacitor is low, that's not a big problem. The optimal range on the Nosferatu is around 10 kilometers. Still has a very decent effect even at this range. I can even improve the Nosferatu performance if I if I want to do that, but I don't really think that it is necessary. Prophecy is now into low armor. My capacitor still holds really well. And surprisingly, my drone is still alive. Usually, if the fight is long, then my drone gets killed for some reason, but now my drone is still alive. I lost so many drones. Probably like 500 drones lost in 4 months or something. The prophecy is still into low armor, slowly, slowly losing the armor. I think the prophecy also stopped using the adaptive armor hardeners, which means that the prophecy lost the capacitor. Now the prophecy is in the hole, and now I'm I'm doing a little bit more damage. And the prophecy has been destroyed. That was a very nice fight. Okay, let me warp out, and then I can show you the the, the build that the prophecy was using. Okay, so that was a large C-type rapid missile launcher. Uh, Dual adaptives, one reactive, trailblazer nanocore, and a nano pump. You know, that was a very solid tank build, a very tanky prophecy. And that was a very nice fight. Okay, well, let me boost up the shield and let's uh, wait out the criminal timer. Next target, we have one oracle. The oracle is 
at 70 kilometers from the station. So Warp I will set my active. orbit at at 16, 17 kilometers. The prophecy is a sniper, so the large, the large lasers, the larger beam lasers will not do a lot of damage on this ship. Well, and somehow the Oracle moved uh, from this location over there. And okay, well, let's hope that they did not see me. So let's warp to the sun and then I will warp at warp drive active. Perhaps 10 or 15 kilometers from the from the oracle. Should be well within the point distance. Really hope that they did not see anything suspicious warping in. This is why I fly the Stratus. The Stratus doesn't active. have this problem. You just scout the target, find a good warping, and you land on zero from the target. With a ship without cloak, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. And the Oracle is not in the mission, which means the Oracle did see me. They s did, they did see something suspicious, and they warped out. Okay, that happens. I should have double checked with the Stratius before We're warping under in. Attack. Oh well, it happens. With a with a little bit of luck they will warp back. I really hope that they did warp back. Now after waiting for 20 minutes the Oracle left the system and well, uh, they did not come back. Now the next target we have another Pelacuser. Orbit will be at Warp drive active. 16 kilometers. I have one tracking disruptor for this target. One Nosferatu tracking disruptor and the long range disruptor. Still using the tank build, but the battle cruiser is not here. This battle cruiser seems to be aware that I am hunting around, so. They are trying to avoid Warp drive active. being in the mission while I am in local, so I will play a little bit tactical. And I left the system, waited for a couple minutes, and then warping back, still using the same build. Warp drive active. We have two ships in local, one Oracle and the other one is this Balakuza that I am going to engage. The Oracle is at the gate, seems like they are AFK. Hmm, okay, well, also looks like that the Valakuzer is looting the Vrex as they clear the mission. So there is a chance that this Valakuzer is using a Salvager, and that means it's going to be a very tasty target. So, I decided to keep using the same trick in the hopes that I catch this Pelacuzer. So far, Warp each time uh, I pop in local, they uh, basically leave the mission. But I think eventually I will catch them. Basically, I want to catch them while they're warping back to the mission, then I can easily point them. Hmm. Okay, seems almost said that it seems empty, but my idea worked. Excellent warping. They landed at 15 kilometers. That's my orbiting distance. They have been pointed, and the Bella Cruiser is tackled. Well then, let's see how this fight goes. I'm pretty sure that this Bella Cruiser is using a salvager because there is no Rex in this We're mission. Also looks like this Belakuza has has a shield tank. Now the Harby is actually a really good armor tank. Not really sure why players would shield tank that ship. They use dual Nosferatus, okay, and also would look like they use pulse lasers. 
Now, that ship has some really good tracking and really good optimal range, so that's why I picked the, the tracking disruptor to mess with the tracking and range of the lasers on that ship because lasers do a lot of damage to the shields and because I'm a shield tank, even with a good tank, the lasers can still do plenty of damage. So that's why I have the tracking disruptor to help me with that. Now I will reduce the speed and uh, we'll see uh, how much the reduced speed will help, will help with the tracking. And again, this is also a situation where I wish I had a tracking computer because I would be able to orbit at 15 kilometers easily while maintaining a very nice damage output on the on the Bellacruiser. So the shield on the Bellacruiser is depleted. Now the Bellacruiser is into armor. This should be a lot easier in armor because they they are shield tanked. I will increase the speed to one kilometer per second. The Bellacruiser is below 50% armor. So far it seems to be doing decent damage. Moving at this velocity around the ship. Hold a second. Did I just see the armor go up? Uh oh. I think we might have a example of a cursed build. We're under attack. Yep. The Harpy is using a hybrid tank. Oh man. Okay, well, um Yeah, uh a hybrid tank. I've seen probably five to six thousand hybrid tanks alone in all the 31,000 kills that I have. Six thousand have to, had to be hybrid tanks. To date, I have no idea why that's the case, but I, I don't know. They are at 55 percent hull, 20 percent, 10 percent, 15 percent armor, and. 3% shield. Well, that's a very uh, interesting analysis of the of the current of the current target. Increasing orbiting speed to 981 meter per second, which is still enough to speed tank most ships. A little bit of hull left, a little bit of armor and shield left, very unique to the hybrid tank ships. And the Bella Cruiser has been destroyed. Let's take a look at the loot. Well, I got a heatsink and a bunch of other stuff, but no salvager. Hmm, was I wrong about the build of the of the Bellacruiser? Well, let's check the kill mail out once I warp out. Well, 688 million, that's quite expensive. A cursed tank, and it did have a salvager, but unfortunately, it did not drop. This would have been easy Omega for a month if, if that salvager did drop. Overall that was a very nice fight and a a good kill, expensive Harby. Yeah that tank is I don't know. So many cursed builds and they even had the Ascend Genocore, so they had good DPS. But the tank of that ship was questionable. Okay, well, let's go to the next target. Now, the next target is a Drake, and remember when I said that all of the targets will be solo, but the last one might not active. count as solo near the end? Well, this is going to be a very, very, very fun fight, to say the least. 
So, let's see what will happen. Now, I have the same build from before. Long range disruptor, Nosferatu, web, uh, full tank build. This Drake was also avoiding avoiding mean local, so I had to wait for a good moment to uh, engage. The Drake has been pointed, the Nosferatu is also working, and well, by the looks of it, this Drake has really solid resistances on the shield. And the Drake is using one target painter, okay, the, the Drake has three medium slot modules, so there's a chance that the Drake has webs, there's a chance that the uh, Drake has a web and scrambler, always the chance that the Drake has a neutralizer or an Ostratus, so uh, I will first test out the, the build of the Drake in order to decide what my orbit will be. Now I will orbit at 15 kilometers. This is basically on the edge of Scrambler and uh, Web. Basically the maximum safe distance that you, that you can be from Webs and Scramblers. And so far the shield of the Drake seems to be going down slowly. The Drake is a shield tank. The Drake can be a very, very nice shield tank if built properly. Now, they are using, I would say, the normal medium We're missiles because attack. they are not doing too much damage on my shield. In this case, it looks like I have good tracking, but at attack. the same time it looks like the Drake has really good, really good resistances. Going into a 10 km orbit to see if the Drake has scramblers or webs. The painter will. Oh, okay. I have been webbed and scrambled. So the Drake does have webs and. He does have a web and one scrambler. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Uh, going back to the normal 15 16 km orbit. Okay. I'm still very fast. The Drake is a slow ship, so there is no way that the Drake will be faster than a standard tool with the afterburn. And by the amount of shield that they're boosting, the Drake probably has a large shield booster and perhaps a build that is very similar to the build that I use on this stabber. So our builds are tanky. We both of our ships don't have DPS and we both have a PvP build. Now not quite sure if the Drake has an afterburner. Doesn't look like the Drake has an afterburner because they are basically not moving much. The Drake is slow but the Drake will be extra slow without a afterburner so I think, in terms of speed, I should be safe. In terms of tank, the Drake is safe and my ship should be safe as well. So, the winner will be decided by... The ship that loses capacity first will uh, lose the fight. And at this moment I'm very excited and very curious to see the build of that ship. Now there's a chance that the Drake calls for help, if that happens I will do the same thing. And then the fight will be decided on whose help will arrive first. I will also say that the Drake pilot knows how to, how to use the shield booster, because they're boosting only when the shield is low, that way they can save the capacitor for as long as possible. Now here I was I thought that my tracking was off, but even when slowing down my ship, the damage remains roughly the same because well the, the Drake just has really good tank. So it will not matter if I slow down or not because the Drake will still 
take very little damage from my auto cans. I would say probably dual adaptives, one reactive, one large shield booster and... And I could pass the battery. That's what I think about the build of this ship. Changing orbit, changing the speed to 836 meters per second. Still testing out my own track. We're under attack. I should do the same thing that the Drake does and boost shield only when the the We're shield is low. That's attack. the smart way how you how you use the shield booster. However, I am at a disadvantage because uh, the Drake might call for reinforcement and I want to have as much shield as possible in case that happens. Now I'm not really worried about multiple ships warping in. I should be able to tank a couple of them with the damage control and with the sleeper core I should have enough capacitor for multiple ships. So this ship is built for for fights that will last a long time. Now I scratched the shield of the Drake, I think that they did forget to use the shield booster for a moment. They don't have any Nosferatu, so and the only way how they can have capacitor is by using the sleeper core or by using past batteries. Or perhaps they even have bricks that make the shield booster use very little capacitor. Perhaps a combination of uh, all of the all of the other things that I've mentioned. So so far, the capacitor on the Drake seems to be holding really well. My capacitor is also holding really well so far. The Drake is using the target painter. Not sure how much energy the Dragon Tanker is using. We're under attack. Okay, my shield almost at 100%. The Drake's shield at around 35-40%. Really good tank on the Drake. We're they even attack. survived the barrage implant. And that happens very rarely. There's a chance that they also have a damage control, although I would say I'm not really sure about that. It doesn't feel like they have a damage control, but I might be wrong. If the Drake was using rapid missiles, then they would not have enough range to hit me. Although I would use my full speed against the rapid missiles, that way the damage that I would be receiving would be minimal. If they have the missile implant, then they can improve the damage application. Orbiting at 15 kilometers. Both of our ships. This is basically a draw at the moment. Now, like we said before, the fight will be decided when one of our ship's capacitors go low. The ship that loses capacitor will lose the fight. So far, this might very well be one of the longest fights that I ever had in this game. And I could easily take the Cinnabal and, you know, use the Cinema with the garage implant has around 3.5 thousand DPS, but the Stabber 2 is feeling a lot more fun. And of course, there's a chance that the Drake could survive the the Cinema. After all, they did survive for so long. There's a chance that the Cinema would actually die against a ship like this with a very good tank. A very good tank can easily defeat We're under a glass cannon cruiser or battleship. We're under attack. My capacitor at 41 percent. 
orbiting at 13 kilometers. This is at the very edge of the web and scrambler range. Or perhaps I am within the range, but the Drake did forget to, to use them. The Drake's shield is now at around 49%. Still holding incredibly well. I think my tracking is actually okay. We're under attack. Now I actually think that the Drake is using a damage control because my damage got We're drastically reduced. If I had the track button, then then I would probably keep the 15 km orbit and I wouldn't be going below 50 km. The damage that I would be receiving would be a little bit higher, but the speed tank would still do the job really well. Now for the barrage implant, in order to apply most of the damage, you have to get a little bit closer. Although... Although this seems to be the ideal distance. The Drake is in very low shield. There's a chance that the Drake lost capacitor. We're under attack. Well, we're under attack. I guess the Drake did not lose capacitor. They were just waiting for the right moment to use the shield booster. Well, I guess the fight will continue. My capacitor at 50%, shield at 68%. I still have the sleeper core and the uh, damage control in case I have to use them. The deck stopped using the web and scrambler. That might be a sign that the capacitor of the Bellicoaster is is low and they're trying to save as much capacitor as possible. Now, at this moment, I we heard that attack. the Drake was calling for backup, so I also... I was also starting to prepare myself to go and call in for backup, but let's see uh, how how this fight so far goes. Obviously, both of our ships can't break each other's tank, and uh, Drake uh, did say in local that they are calling in more ships, so once I see something suspicious, I will also start to call in for backup. And well, this fight will escalate in in a larger fight, probably. We will see what will happen. There is still... There is still enough time to see where this fight goes. So far, to date, this might be the longest fight that I've ever had. And honestly, one of the most fun ones. Now, did they, they take uh, another hit in armor there? So... There is a chance that the capacitor of the deck is empty. They're probably waiting on the on the capacitor battery to come online, and I think the capacitor battery did come online. Perhaps they're using a large capacitor battery and a large shield booster, and that could be a very very interesting build. Well, uh, the shield is now growing up. I'm orbiting at full speed at 13-12 kilometers. 
have been wiped and scrambled, which means that the Drake's reinforcement is nearby. And they were saving the capacitor up until now for probably this moment. I have a we close eye on the local in case something suspicious happens. I don't plan to warp away because I really want to see what build this Drake is using. Okay, well, uh, there goes the web and scrambler. They are saving capacitor again. And this is the moment where I wish to have the large neutralizer with the track computer build, because with that build I could deplete the capacitor of the Drake and I wouldn't be worried about the, the tank because they would not have any capacitor left to, to boost the shield or to boost the shield resistances. I have been wiped and scrambled again, okay. Not really sure what's going on with the with the capacitor on the Drake, but definitely something's up. My capacitor at 54 53%. I did use the sleeper core just to avoid some damage and to boost the capacitor. Still have the damage control as backup. So, at this moment I have been fighting with Drake for about 25 minutes and I will go change my orbit to 15 kilometers. The slipper core almost out of cooldown so I will use that to recharge my shield. I mean I will use that to recharge my capacitor and then recharge my shield. 75 seconds, okay. The capacitor, the Drake's capacitor doesn't Warning. seem to be capacitor running out anytime soon. Which makes me really curious about the, about the build the that they are using. Perhaps if I had the Trahe computer and neutralizer this fight would be a lot shorter and uh, I think I will actually use that build from now on because this is a very, very long fight, a longest fight I've ever had. And in the end, it's very interesting to see how much, how much damage did that Drake withstand throughout these 25 minutes. The Drake is in low shield again. I expect the. Oh, there goes the shield booster. I uh, did do some damage on the armor. Well, I think slowly I am winning this fight because the Drake is losing armor bit by bit. And the bastard on the Drake is probably depleted by now. They are mostly running on the fast battery. A very interesting tactic, to be honest. A very interesting tactic. Okay. Well, looks like my reinforcement has arrived a little bit faster than the Drake's reinforcement. So I guess today I am going to be lucky. The Drake's fleet is three jumps away, so we have to shoot down this ship before they land, if possible. If not, well, we will have a we will have a small escalation in in the in the small fight over here. But I have to admit, the the tank on the Drake is amazing. We're under attack. Okay. We have our Omen Navy warping in. Which means that I will go and... Change 
me orbit to a We're under attack. closer distance. Let's see if they can tank two of our ships. Looks like they actually can. We might be in trouble here. That's definitely a large ship. Orbit at eight kilometers, at four kilometers. Okay, let me boost up my own shield a little bit. The Drake is now actively boosting shields. Warning, capacitor running low. We are barely scratching the surface of that Drake, but I think the capacitor of that ship will be exhausted, so their ship booster will go offline. And I think that's what happened. Okay, stop boosting shield. The Drake is now into armor. Low armor. That's one cyclone large shield booster. But the Drake We're already the heavy armor damage. The Drake is now into hull. Attack. And will be time to warp out because more ships are jumping in the system and we don't know what kind of ships they will use so let's loot the wreck. We're under attack. Very nice loot. And let me align myself. Yes, more ships are definitely definitely joining. Let me just quickly take a look at the kill. 377 million. 152,000 damage taken. A very nice tank. A very nice build and a very, very impressive tank on this Drake. Well then, uh, let me warp out and well, this was the first PvP run with the Staber Tomb. I did try to fly this ship like the Vagabond and so far the idea to use this ship like the Vagabond seems to be working. Uh, I really enjoyed the solo run with this ship today, uh, really hoping that uh, the next build will be a little bit more time efficient in the way of uh, being able to neutralize the capacitor of the target and then just uh, shoot down the targets without worrying about their tank. So, uh, I will go and uh, build this ship with the experience uh, that I gained from this PvP roam and next time when I come back, well, uh, hopefully the Staber 2 or you can call this ship the Vagabond, honestly, at this moment they're basically the same ship, so I'm very curious to see how how the next build will perform and with that being with that being said hope that you enjoyed stay safe fly safe and i'll see you next time